Hey, this is James at Steamhead. We just went to a great teacher's event called EdTech in Guangzhou, China. I went to a workshop there led by Sue Francis, math teacher at AISG. This workshop was amazing. This is the best example that I have seen of how to use 3D printing to help students understand calculus. She lets record the session and I'm gonna share a short version of that with you now. She includes links at the end of the video if you want the materials to do the same thing in your own class. Thanks, Sue. Sue Francis. So today I was presenting on um, using 3D printers and the 3D printing software to help math students in high school improve their visualization skills for the math questions that they need to be able to answer. I work at AISG in the Science Park campus and the first thing they showed us when I came here was like look at all these 3D printers and we want you to use these printers in your academic classes. And, and it was like, wow, 3D printing. Surely we can do something in math. And so I googled 3D printing in math and found absolutely nothing. And so I went to my innovation coach and I said, you know, in calculus, we do this thing where we spin shapes around an axis and the kids have to calculate the volume. Wouldn't that be great to do for 3D printing? Can you find out how to do that so I can, like, you know, do it in my class? She came back to me three weeks later and said, nobody does this. Like, nobody does this. So it, like, sat at the back of my mind for a year. And then finally she came to me and said, Sue, look, you know, we're using this software and like do you think you could do what you want to do using the software and so last year i actually did exactly that so this in math students need to be able to visualize in their heads a flat representation that they see in a textbook or a diagram and they need to be able to visualize it as a three-dimensional shape and these skills despite the fact that kids nowadays are so visual they are really really bad at it but in particular the sorts of questions the more higher order questions that we are asking the kids are to do with rotation around an axis and these are um, definitely higher order thinking skill questions I just want to like try and give you an idea of like what how difficult these tasks really are. So this is the y-axis here. Imagine this as a um, as a just a line, and the shape gets spun around 360 degrees. So as it turns around, it makes a solid. And like if you're already thinking, oh my god, what she's talking about, it's exactly the experience that the kids have, right? So the question is, right, this is what the kids have to be able to do. So then they have this mental 3D shape in their head, all four of them actually, and you need to ask yourselves, like, which one has the biggest volume, right? So, interesting. It's actually this shape here is the correct answer. And it just goes to show how unintuitive this is, and it's no real wonder why our kids struggle with this. This shape here is A, A, B, C, and then this shape here is D. And like, although you may still have a really good idea of which one's the bigger volume, you probably got like a better idea of something to judge from right now with the 3D shape that you can put in your hand, you can feel the relative weights and stuff. And then, if you can believe it, the questions get even trickier, right? Now I've got the same shape, right? Now, so, and I'm still spinning them on the y-axis, but suddenly I'm creating a gap. So, so when you leave a gap, you get a hole in the middle of your cylinder. So this is very hard for the kids to conceptualize if they don't have good visualization skills. And then a bigger hole, and you get that. And this one here has um, something like three times the volume of this one here. So, um, so 
that's kind of like, and then, so that's ninth grade. In calculus, we do this. Mm -hmm. We expect our kids to be able to calculate the volume given a function, and you don't have to worry about the math here, but like, they calculate these. It's a technology question. They do it on their GDC mostly. But the kids are doing this with no conceptual understanding at all of what on earth these things would look like. This is the shape here that's been cut out and it's been spun round on an axis to give you a 3D shape. And so we did this literally the lesson before we, um, before we taught the math, just to give the kids like some sort of um, understanding of what it's going to look like. So we um, created um, files in class, and so as I said, I had 80 minute classes. We went from the kids never using the software to teaching them how to use the software. We gave them the tasks that they had to do, and they were downstairs watching their things print by the end of the lesson. So it's like as a um, IB teacher in particular, where you're really constrained by time often in syllabus, this was not a two week project that we took out of our, um, out of our kids' day. We actually did it in a single lesson. And I'm just gonna drag this. So I've made instructional videos, right? So this is how we got over the technology barrier to get the kids to produce this in one lesson. And this is, this is what I do in class, right? I don't have to have a 3D printer. I can literally do this in class, project it, and show the kids like what the question they're working on right now. It takes a second to do this. And the kids are like, oh, now I see, right? So having access to some, like this software, and even if you never 3D print, it is an amazing tool to, like, as a math teacher to be able to like project, show the kids, look, this is your shape, this is the axis, and look, I, um, so, but that's something else, like if you don't have access to 3D printing, the kids can still make this file, they can put it into Photoshop, and then they can spin it around in every direction, but not present. I made this video, like not in presenter mode. If it was in presenter mode, it would just be a flat picture. Do go to the site and feel free to download those video files. There's an electronic copy of what I gave my ninth graders. As I said, it's not the greatest, but it's like a, a building point for you if you are interested in that. And this is the um, calculus lesson that I did. So, thank you for coming. So glad there's more than three of you. <laughs> So that's the brief version. Make sure to check out her links if you want downloadables on how to do this in your own class. Um, so thanks to Sue, thanks to uh, American International School in Guangzhou for hosting EdTech for free every year. For more content like this, you can subscribe, uh, make sure to like us or share out to other teachers. If you use WeChat, I'll post my ID below. You can add me and in my moments, you can see lots of stuff like this. At Steamhead, we're not just about teaching technology. We're about using technology to make education more relevant. Check out our website at steamhead.space.